Today we're going to be talking about a virus that's able to persist in a latent state inside its human host for a lifetime after the initial infection. It's also a virus that classically presents in two very different ways, as it did during the lifetime of this 60-year-old man named Noah, a physics teacher whose favorite student is his three-year-old grandson Joshua. Noah went in to see his doctor one morning after waking up with a painful vesicular rash on the right side of his torso. He had been experiencing pain in that exact region for four days before the rash appeared, and he told his doctor that the area where the rash occurred felt so tender that even when the cloth of his shirt rubbed against it, the pain was excruciating. After just one look at the dermatomal distribution of the tiny fluid-filled blisters on Noah's upper body, the physician immediately recognized the characteristic presentation of shingles, also called herpes zoster, a skin manifestation caused by the reactivation of the varicella zoster virus. Varicella zoster is a member of the herpes virus family, and it typically causes chicken pox in children and shingles in older adults. When Noah was six years old, he remembers that both he and his younger brother came down with chicken pox, a highly contagious disease caused by primary infection with the varicella virus. As a child, Noah had breathed in some viral particles containing varicella. Inhaled respiratory droplets are the most common means of entry into the body for varicella virus, but children can also become infected by direct contact with the secretions from the rash of an infected person. In children, and less frequently young adults who get chickenpox, the inhaled virus colonizes the epithelial cells of the upper respiratory tract, where it replicates for several days before the virus spreads from the epithelial cells to the tissues of the tonsils and other local lymphoid tissues. In the lymphoid tissues, varicella zoster displays viral tropism for host T-cells, an ability to infect these cells. When T-cells then enter the bloodstream, the virus is transmitted throughout the body during the primary viremia. After a second round of replication, larger amounts of the virus are again released into the bloodstream during the secondary viremia, and this is when the virus invades the skin, resulting in small itchy vesicles on the face and body of the infected child. Noah remembers his mother making sure that the boy's nails were cut short and that their hands were cleaned often. At night, they were made to sleep with socks over their hands to prevent them from scratching the vesicles. One of the most common complications of chickenpox is bacterial superinfection, an additional infection of the skin lesions with a bacteria like group A strep or staph aureus introduced through scratching of the infected areas. During the period of primary infection with varicella, the virus is taken up into sensory neurons that terminate on the skin. The virus will then migrate along the nerve cell until it gets to a dorsal root ganglion, where the virus eventually transitions into its latent state. During the latent phase, which usually spans the lifetime for previously infected individuals, the virus isn't actively replicating and it's kept in check by immune surveillance systems in the body. The nerve cells themselves are immune privilege tissues and so the varicella virus has evolved to favor this advantageous hiding place. With increasing age, Noah's immune system began to lose some of its strength, and the varicella virus in his nerve cells was able to reactivate and begin replicating once again. Significant amounts of the virus migrating down the nerve cells towards the area of the skin that they innervate led to the characteristic vesicular rash in a dermatomal distribution associated with shingles. The pain in that region was also mediated by the infected nerve cells. Like chickenpox, shingles is a highly contagious condition, and Noah was at first very worried about potentially infecting his grandson. His physician reassured him that if Joshua's immunizations were up to date, he would have received the varicella vaccine around one year of age and would therefore be protected. 
Vaccines against shingles are also routinely recommended in many countries for adults over 60 years of age, as their immune systems may begin to weaken, making a reactivation more likely. In Noah's case, the physician who made the diagnosis did so based on the history and clinical presentation, which was a classic one for shingles. But in less obvious cases, diagnostic tests like skin biopsies, sank smears, or using molecular diagnostic tests like PCR may be necessary. One of the more common and more severe complications associated with shingles is postherpetic neuralgia, a difficult-to-treat condition associated with nerve pain that results when the varicella virus damages nerve cells to the affected dermatomal regions. This leads to abnormal electrical firing that can convey severe pain to the brain for months, years, and in some cases for life. In this case, Noah was treated promptly with an antiviral medication, reducing the duration of his symptoms and reducing the risk of nerve damage and postherpetic neuralgia. His blisters crusted over and healed within the next two to three weeks, and although there was a small amount of scarring from the rash, his skin was no longer sensitive. Noah's shingles never recurred, even though the varicella zoster virus continued to persist and be tolerated in Noah's body. The virus and the immune system managed to sustain a delicate balance, and this grandfather spent many more years teaching his grandson the wonders of science.